Today we're talking about why Apple's new iOS 18 update with satellite messaging has not yet killed the Garmin inReach. That's next. About a month ago at Apple's WWDC event, they announced that satellite messaging is coming to the iPhone via iOS 18. With this update, it's not only limited to SOS emergency communications, but it's also enabling you for non-emergency communications with friends and loved ones. So communication can happen just like you send and receive text messages, except over satellite. This announcement got many people excited and actually led many to think with this release, Apple has just killed Garmin. This led many to believe the hype, thinking that there is now no more use for the Garmin devices, and many, as a result, begin selling off their Garmin inReach devices to see if they can make as much money back for it while they still can. I think this hype and response is really premature, and there's still very much a place for a dedicated satellite communication device, such as the Garmin inReach. Now, there are some advantages on why this would allure people. For one, you only have to take your iPhone, and everybody pretty much has that on them at all times, so that's pretty handy. Now, even with this announcement, I believe there's still very much a place for a dedicated SOS satellite communication device. While it is a really cool thing that Apple is implementing here, there's still a ton of advantages that the inReach device has over the iPhone, and it doesn't make them obsolete at all. Well, sure, for the casual hiker, an iPhone can replace the inReach for those who go out maybe just a few times a year. But I would actually argue for anyone who is really serious about going backpacking, hiking, or doing adventures out in the backcountry, going into areas where you're actually gonna need a satellite communication device, you would still be very wise to have a dedicated SOS satellite communication device rather than just solely rely on your iPhone. And this is true, especially when one's life depends on getting a message through. Now, I believe these iPhones are kind of like a Swiss Army knife. They can do a lot of different tasks and you can have it all in one device. However, while it is convenient, it doesn't do them as efficiently or dependably as you would like. Satellite communication being the latest addition to the Swiss Army knife that we call the iPhone. But to further go with the analogy, if I need to butcher some meat, I'm not gonna go to my Swiss Army knife. I want a dedicated knife that is built for the task. One, it's safer and it's more durable and more efficient. Sure, the Swiss Army knife might get the job done in time, but it's not the best tool for the task. Well, satellite communication is a nice welcome addition to the iPhone, it's in no way a suitable replacement for the true backcountry traveler. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few reasons why I believe Apple has not killed the Garmin inReach with their new iOS 18 update. So first, let's talk about the cost. If people are already in the Apple ecosystem and already have an iPhone 14 or newer, why would you wanna buy an inReach? Or if you have an inReach, why would you wanna keep it and not sell it and just rely solely on your iPhone. After all, the inReach devices are an additional price you have to pay. Another thing you need to use these is a subscription plan, which ranges from 12 all the way to $60 per month, depending on the amount of messages you plan to send. Currently, Apple is saying that their service is free for the first year or two, for their users when they purchase a phone. But as more people begin hopping on and using this system, no doubt they're going to have to charge for it. Hopefully the SOS feature will remain free, but to communicate with friends and family is something that's probably coming to a subscription plan and something you'll have to pay for eventually. One thing you must consider when evaluating whether to ditch your Garmin is the satellite connectivity. Apple's using Global Star Network, and this is the same as Spot. Now, I've used Spot in the past. Even with clear skies, I've had my messages not go through. It hasn't been a super dependable system. Now, they are adding more satellites to help that, so coverage is ultimately getting better, but currently it's limited and it's not 100% global. Garmin, on the other hand, has far better connectivity currently. Their SOS feature uses their Iridium satellite network, which is 100% worldwide coverage, and it can be used anywhere out in the world, even in the middle of the ocean. The Iridium satellite network is definitely proven and super dependable. There are cases after cases of successful rescues using the Iridium network. Now, how one connects to that network is also something to really consider. For the iPhone, the antenna in here is limited because of the size of the device, and it's kind of weak when you really compare it to the Garmin. For the iPhone, you have to aim your phone in the sky to try and get the best connection. An Apple show up that shows you how you can connect to the satellite that's closest by and you need to turn your hand and tilt it to connect to that satellite. But the thing is, once you're connected, the satellites are moving in 
the sky. So you have to continue to move with it to remain connected. So in order to send and receive messages, you have to be holding up the phone and remaining connected to that satellite as it orbits across the sky. So something to consider is if you are in an emergency, are you banking on the ability to be able to hold up your phone and move with it if you need that emergency response to you. If you have a broken arm, broken shoulder, broken hand, something like that, it's gonna be very difficult to maintain satellite communication to provide the appropriate response for you. Now, hopefully that'll change as technology gets better and stronger with these antennas, but currently the Garmin has an antenna that is far superior and far stronger than what Apple has in their iPhone. As a result for Garmin inReach, all you have to have is clear skies in order to connect to a satellite. This is good to send and receive messages. You don't have to maintain connection by holding it up and moving as the satellite goes. You just have to have it open to open skies. So if you're hiking and you're not initiating the messages to your friends and family, you're not going to be able to receive their messages with the Apple unless you stop hold it up, connect, and then check to see if you got any messages. Or if Garmin, when you're hiking, you can have it attached to your backpack strap, and as you're hiking, someone sends you a message, you'll get the alert right away. Another thing to consider is the ruggedness and dependability of your device. For the iPhone, it's getting better every year. This iPhone 15 is made of titanium casing, as well as having some Gorilla glass, but they in no way can compare to the ruggedness and durability of the Garmin inReach, which is made for the back country. iPhones simply aren't made for that environment. They're made for everyday use. Just getting water on the screen can completely debilitate you from using the touch screen and typing in text. If you find yourself in rain or snow and your life is depending on it to get a message, it's gonna be very hard to type the appropriate message you need to get the help. I've dropped many of my iPhones and at times it does break the screen. And if that happens out in the back country in rugged environments, uh, that can really leave your device inoperable. Not to mention direct sunlight and heat can really influence your iPhone as well. iPhones can easily go into overheat mode and be rendered useless until it cools off. And all of these things are common things that can happen to any iPhone. Sure, you can try to get a super durable case. Sure, you can try to put all these different glasses on it to prevent the main glass from cracking. But when it comes down to it, iPhones really just are not made for that rugged kind of environment. And if your life is on the line needing SOS communication to get through, I don't want to bank on that. However, for the Garmin inReach devices, they're all made with the rugged backcountry in mind. They have rubber that surrounds the casing and really durable plastic. The ports are also covered really nicely to prevent water from seeping in. You have the ability to use buttons so you can still select it even if the screens do get wet. It can be rained on, snowed on, dropped, and they're still gonna work. Let's talk about the battery life, and that's something that's crucial to consider between these things. The iPhone can in no way compete with the Garmin inReach device's battery life. InReach devices can last up to 14 days and longer. You can even put them in expedition mode and get even more use out of it as well. iPhones, if you're lucky, will last a few days, really. And most people wanna take their iPhones out into the field so that they can take videos and photos as well as follow maps. And when you do that, your battery definitely is draining faster. Well, someone might say, well, just turn off your iPhone to save the battery and only turn it on when you actually need to communicate. And if you do that, it really defeats the whole purpose of why you would take an iPhone out into the field anyways. You might say, well, we have battery power banks we can bring and we can go ahead and charge this over and over. But the amount of battery packs you'll need to take to get the similar kind of battery life of a Garmin device is really gonna defeat the purpose of going lightweight. Another thing to consider is in the cold conditions. Cold is very much a battery drain. And that is ever true for your iPhone as well. Go out in the snow, go out in the cold, and when you're going backpacking, going up in peaks and stuff, you're going to encounter cold weather, and that's going to really drain the battery as well. The Garmin, on the other hand, is built for that. It's a bit more insulated, and the battery life might drain still a little bit faster than it normally would, but still you have plenty more life than you will with an iPhone. Now, there are a few things that really make the Garmin stand out, such as getting updated weather forecasts. Garmin gives you the ability via their satellite connectivity to get instant weather forecasting to your precise location. This is really helpful information for if you're deciding to climb a peak or not. This will help you to get the proper weather forecast 
given the conditions on what to expect while you're up there. The iPhone devices simply cannot do that right now based on satellite connectivity. You might say, well, we can message a friend or family to get a forecast update. And that's given they understand how to give the weather forecast to your precise location and not a very general location around a town. When you're up in a peak, the weather's very different higher up there than what you are down below near any given town. Garmin will give you the weather forecast for your exact location. And that's something that I find extremely valuable. Another cool thing is a dedicated Garmin SOS button. It has this SOS cap, you just flip it and press down that button and it will connect you to the Garmin response team. For the iPhone, it's a whole lot more lengthy process in order to get SOS messages to go through. You gotta connect to the satellite, you gotta type the message and go through the different choices and then they'll send it to the people. One thing to consider is live location tracking. And with the iPhone, when you send a message to SOS, it'll also send your location to them so they can track where you are. They'll also send it to your emergency contact list, friends and family, so they are able to track in real time too. But the thing is, it's not dedicated tracking intervals that you can send on a map to your friends. For your Garmin device, however, you can send your tracking intervals to your friends and family and they can track you in live time. You can send them a link to your map and you can share it with them and they'll be able to follow you where you go. Another thing that Garmin does is the breadcrumb feature. It's a pretty cool feature with as you're walking, it's taking note of your tracking location. And what it's doing is it's leaving breadcrumbs. So if you happen to get lost, you can just follow your breadcrumb trail and it'll lead you back to where you originally started. The iPhone has no such capability of doing that via satellite connectivity yet. Another crucial thing to consider is search and rescue. When you use your iPhone SOS feature and they send a rescue team, you're gonna have a helicopter come, they're gonna take you out where, and send you to a hospital wherever you need to go so that they can do the appropriate things to save your life. This can be very costly and it comes directly out of your pocket. And while it's nice to be alive, many people can go bankrupt because of the great cost it is for search and rescue. Now, if you rely solely on your iPhone, I highly recommend to seek out your own insurance for search and rescue, have that ready. And if you need it, you have that to where you're not gonna go bankrupt. But with Garmin, one of the pros of using this and being on their subscription plan is you can actually add on search and rescue insurance for only $39 for the year. This is a no brainer really, and you get $100,000 of search and rescue coverage. This can really save your butt financially if you do happen to need to press that search and rescue button to have that extra peace of mind knowing that it's not gonna break the bank just to press it. So these are just a few points to consider and yes, we can also come up with some more. Overall, I think it's rather amazing that Apple is offering this for their iPhone users, really an incentive to get the new iPhone. Well, iPhones are delicate and definitely not as rugged, it sure is better than nothing. And the cool thing is it's on a device that people will normally have on them at all times. Now for the casual hiker who goes a few times a year and never really goes off trail, sure, an iPhone can be sufficient and you can have the assurance if you need something, you can make the communication you need. But to be honest, that doesn't describe the market whom Garmin is actually seeking to reach. For the true backpacker, climber, mountaineer, backcountry traveler, a dedicated satellite communication device is still the best way to go. And like I said in my previous post that I made on my inReach devices, I believe satellite texting and calls is the future. But even if that is the case, it doesn't kill off the Garmin inReach for the reasons we discuss. So yes, while the title is very clickbaity that Apple just killed Garmin with iOS 18, it simply is not true. So concluding thoughts, should you go and sell off your Garmin device because you have the new iPhone 14 or 15 with iOS 18? I don't think that's the case. Personally, I wouldn't because of the style of backpacking and climbing that I do. The benefits of having a dedicated SOS unit far outweigh for me than just relying on an iPhone. But ultimately, that's a question you have to ask for yourself. After considering the pros and cons, you need to make the best decision you need that features your kind of hiking style as well as your budget. Overall, I believe competition is good and I'm excited that Apple has come out with this, but it in no way does it kill the Garmin inReach. Hopefully, it actually helps reduce some of the cost of the plans that Garmin currently has. And if it doesn't, for the Garmin users, they can actually go to smaller plans and save a lot of money and use their iPhone for the other communications that are casual. For the serious backpacker who's actually going into areas that actually need an inReach device, I think you cannot really rely on the Apple because of its battery life, the ruggedness, and also the need to 
have to point this at satellites continuously in order to send and receive messages. Where the Garmin inReach will do it just because it has a lot more powerful antenna, you don't have to match it up with the satellite as it's moving in orbit. You can just send it and receive it as long as you have clear skies. So what do you think of the new iOS 18 update for the Apple iPhone? Has it killed the Garmin inReach device? Or do you think the Garmin inReach is definitely still viable today? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more outdoor content like this, make sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.